Welcome to another edition of Anthony T's Horror and Wrestling Show. I'm Anthony T. In this edition, I will have the 5th Annual Horror Show Awards. I'll also have a, another review of a VS title, as it's VS Month here on the podcast. I have another one that's been sitting there, waiting to be seen. I will review it. It's another film that I've seen for the first time ever. I'll keep it a surprise. Now, I really hate to start this episode with some sad news. As usually, the first episodes of the year, I try to avoid news as much to cut down on length of show, but this is something I have to talk about. And it's about the recent passing of Jay Briscoe of the tag team, the Briscoe Brothers. The Briscoe Brothers were literally one of the greatest tag teams of this generation, quite frankly, of my generation. Because the Briscoes really were Ring of Honor. They were like synonymous, the equivalent of Sting to WCW, Tommy Dreamer to ECW, Undertaker to WWE. That's who the Briscoes were, as they spent their entire careers pretty much in Ring of Honor. And on January 17th, we lost Jay Briscoe. He was killed in a car accident in Laurel, Delaware. It's just sad. When I heard the news, it was just devastating. Seriously, seeing that tweet from Tony Khan... That Jay Briscoe passed away. This is a guy who will never get his due as one of the greats. Because he never wrestled in WWE. He never wrestled in AEW. But he was great. Don't get me wrong. He was a very controversial figure in wrestling. As he tweeted out a couple of homophobic tweets back in 2013, but according to various sources, he really completely regretted those tweets. In Ring of Honor, he would have really great tag team feuds with the Second City Saints of CM Punk, Coke Cabana, The Prophecy, BJ Whitmer, Dan Moff, The American Wolves, The Kings of Wrestling of Claudio Castanoli and Chris Hero. El Generico, who you people in WWE know as Sami Zayn, and Kevin Steen, who you know as Kevin Owens in WWE, also had feuds with Age of the Fall, which included Tyler Black, who is Seth Rollins in WWE, the American Wolves of Davey Richards, Eddie Edwards, Red Dragon, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, the Young Bucks, SoCal Uncensored, the Kingdom, and many other tag teams in Ring of Honor that came through Ring of Honor throughout the years. Besides that, Jay Briscoe had the complete package. He was a great promo, a great wrestler in the ring. He can deliver great tag matches, great singles matches, including feuds with Kevin Steen over the Ring of Honor title. Adam Cole for the Ring of Honor title. Jay Letho. Whatever Jay Briscoe was given in Ring of Honor, he made it gold. And you can't say that with a lot of people in wrestling. A lot of people in wrestling are either great at tag teams or great at singles. But Jay Briscoe was one of the few that could do both tag team and singles wrestling. What the equivalents of Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, who were both great tag team wrestlers and great singles wrestlers. That was also Jay Briscoe as well. He was never given that big spotlight until Tony Khan purchased Ring of Honor and that year-long feud with FTR that recently happened. Those matches were the best trilogy of matches I've seen in quite a while. And if I had to choose between the Elite, Death Triangle, Best of Seven, or FTR Briscoe's trilogy, I probably lean more towards FTR Briscoe's trilogy because of the level of brutality those three matches had. Don't get me wrong, the other 
feud was brutal, but that feud literally ended with a match of the year candidate. The double dog collar match at final battle from this past December, which was also sadly Jay Briscoe's last Ring of Honor match. As he was a great talent, it's just I'm a, still a loss of words from this, seriously, because he was like one of the hot and souls of Ring of Honor. From the first match of that promotion where he wrestled Amazing Red till his last match this past December, Jay Briscoe really, every time he was in a Ring of Honor ring, gave Ring of Honor fans some really great wrestling moments that will live on for years to come. Considering that Tony Khan owns Ring of Honor and you have Honor Club, as he's really had some great matches in that promotion, including a match against his brother, Mark Briscoe, at the first year anniversary show, tagging with his brother against Samoa Joe in Homicide at Motor City Madness 2006, where that match is completely one of the most insane Briscoe matches you'll ever see to his Super Cod of Honor 7 win against Kevin Steen to his Final Battle 2016 match with Adam Cole where he regained the Ring of Honor world title as he's won the title twice as a singles wrestler while also being in a tag team with his brother too. It's not like they went a separate ways and they were like face heel. They're literally both faces at the time when Jay Briscoe was winning those titles. But those were, I think, great moments in Ring of Honor history. And definitely that feud with FTR that started back at Final Battle 2021. Jay Briscoe is definitely a talent I think will be missed very much in Ring of Honor. As he was literally... One of their best talents. It's sad that he was taken away from us at the age of 38. Hey guys, this is Steven Christina. I'm the founder, owner, creator, and host of Super Retro Throwback Reviews. Are you looking for the best movie reviews, music reviews, video game reviews, and Comic-Con coverage all around? Well then look no further. Definitely check out Super Retro Throwback Reviews on YouTube and our new audio podcast, the new and improved Super Retro Throwback Reviews Audio Files version 2.0 on the following media distributors. Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Spotify. Class is over, John. Time for something new and improved. Every day, there's a family struggling with hospital bills to care for their sick child who is fighting an illness. There's a woman who is fighting breast cancer and is having trouble making ends meet while paying for their treatment. And there are burn victims that are going through treatments to heal their deep wounds. There is a charity in the horror community that helps these people. Scares That Care is an organization that helps families deal with the bills for their child. They help women get the treatment they need to fight breast cancer. And they help people who are dealing with severe burns get the help they need to heal. Scares That Care is a 100% volunteer organization and 501c3 nonprofit charity that is dedicated to helping these people in fighting real monsters. To find out more information or to donate to Scares That Care, you can go to www.scaresthatcare.org. Every donation helps Scares That Care fight real monsters. Welcome to the 5th Annual Horror Show Awards. Now, this is the opposite from last episode. This episode will acknowledge the best in horror in 2022. This episode will have, like, best screenplay, best actor, best actress, best indie film, best documentary. This year, there's a couple changes. First, I changed the first category. I used to have a category called Witch film surprised me the most. Now this year I changed the wording of it. It's a film that surprised me either in a good way 
or something I didn't expect that surpassed my expectations. It could be like a new story in the case with this award this year. And I decided to do that because, well, this is a new story that really shocked me in a good way and surprised me that exceeded what I originally thought it was going to do. The other thing is I have a new category this year. Best Foreign Horror Film. Now, this is a category that can be either a British horror film or a foreign language horror film. I figured since I'm seeing like three, four of these a year, I might as well create a category. Because with Shudder releasing a lot of foreign horror film, and you now get Screenbox releasing foreign horror films, that I think that's going to be a common fixture here on going forward with my horror viewing. Because I do watch a lot of Shudder. I do wa watch a lot of Screenbox. So going forward, if you, I watch three or more foreign horror films, either from Britain, Australia, or foreign language speaking countries, that would be considered a foreign horror film. If it's in the U.S. or in Canada, it doesn't qualify for this award. It has to be outside North America with the exception if it's a foreign language film, it can qualify. Say if the foreign language film came from Mexico, it qualifies because it was spoken in a foreign language besides English. So any films in North America that are English speaking do not qualify for this category. With that, let's start the 5th Annual Horror Show Awards. The first award, film that surprised me in a good way either in something I didn't expect or a film that surpassed my expectations. Last year, I chose any of the Fear Street films released on Netflix. The 2022 Horror Show Award for film that surprised me in a good way, either in something I didn't expect, or film that surpassed my expectations, goes to Terrifier 2 making over $10 million at the box office. This film was a shocker. I did not expect Terrifier 2 to make $10 million at the box office. I expected maybe one or two weeks in theaters. That's about it. Because... Indie horror films do not do well. Indie horror films have a hard time gaining word of mouth. It was amazing what Terrifier 2 did. It did have its built-in fan base, but it expanded on its built-in fan base. Because you don't make $10 million if you don't expand on your built-in fan base. And this film... Was in theaters for like six, seven weeks. It was just amazing to see this film in theaters for that long. Even if it's being shown at night only. This film accomplished something that no indie horror film has done in years. And this was without any major advertising or any major backing. This was an independent horror film. That was shot for under a million dollars. And it made over ten million dollars at the box office. Congratulations to David Howard Thornton and Damien Leone. Because those two did a really good job in really putting out a very good sequel. And it was a very good sequel. It is one of my favorite films of the past year. This was Hell of a lot better than Halloween Ends. Who would have thought that at the beginning of the year that Terrify 2 would be better than Halloween Ends? But it was. But still, it's still an amazing feat. This film got even press in mainstream media due to the fact that people were literally throwing up and fainting at screenings of Terrifier 2. I never thought I'd see the day that an indie horror film would get mainstream media coverage. Seriously. Even though it's for the wrong reasons, but still, it got the curiosity factor to get people into the theaters. 
It's just amazing that Terrify 2 made over $10 million at the box office. It just is. And that's why it surprised me and exceeded in my expectations. Next award, Best Score. Last year, I had New York Ninja. The 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Score goes to Doc Glasses. The Dario Argento film. One of the main reasons why... Doc Glasses is very good, and why I like this film a lot was the score. The score had this Jalo-type feel that is needed for a Jalo film to succeed. I like how the score felt like another character in this film. Whether it's haunting theme, or some of the themes during the course of this film, it flows very well with the action of this film, I like the fact that it really added to something. Because in Italian horror films, one of the key components that you need for a successful Italian horror film is a very good score. And this film had that. It elevated this film. It got me interested more in the action. Because sometimes you need a score to help move the action along. Especially in that third act of that film. And for a foreign film like that, you need a good score. This film has it. It helped kept the suspense level up. And that's why Doc Glasses wins Best Score. Next award, Best Costume. Last year, I chose Censor. The 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Costume goes to Pearl. One of the main reasons why Pearl wins this award is I like the way that the costumes really capture the 1918 look as it really made it feel like it was in that time period. I like how whoever did the costumes for this film made sure that they took the time and the effort to have the costumes really have that 1918 look to it in which the film is set. It really helps with the time period the film is supposedly taking place in. And it really added to this film a lot because the look of the costumes were just great. And for a period piece like... Pearl, you need the costumes to look great. And amazingly, it looks great for an independent horror film, too. That's another thing. This isn't a big budgeted film. This is a film that was shot for, what, a million dollars? And the look of the costumes for a million dollar film is just phenomenal. As it gets the detail right for that time period with a film that's shot for a million dollars. Usually films shot with a million dollars, you don't see great costumes that look great, especially for a period piece that takes place back in World War I. It's just amazing how the costumes looked great and it really captured that time period. And that's why Pro wins best costume. Moving on to Best Special Effects. Last year, I chose Malignant. The 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Special Effects goes to Terrifier 2. Now, the original Terrifier won the award back in 2018. Five years later, the film's sequel wins the award for Best Special Effects. And there was no other film that was going to win that award. Trust me, that is some of the most gory effects that I've seen in the last decade or so. Damien Leone and his team really upped the special gore effects for this film. As there are such gory scenes that really cause people to vomit and faint in theaters. It is by far one of the most goriest films I have seen in the last five years. This is the film that brought extreme horror into the mainstream. 
Leone and his special effects team really pull off all the stops here. As they really do a great job in really making the effects look horrifying and disgusting. It's something you want in a slasher horror film. It really added to the chaos that was Terrifier 2. And it really made Terrifier 2 a great sequel. That's why Terrifier 2 wins Best Special Effects. And you can make that number 2 for Terrifier 2 at the 2022 Horror Show Awards. Moving on. Best Makeup. Last year I had Malignant. The 2022 award for Best Makeup goes to Terrifier 2. This is say it. Terrifier 2... In terms of makeup and special effects were years beyond any other film when considering my choices for those two awards. Because quite frankly, Terrified 2 strength was its makeup and its special effects. Again, Leone does a very good job making sure the makeup looked very good, whether it's the victims of the film that had a very gory, detailed look, or whether Art the Clown had his look, or whether Sienna had her look. They all looked very good. And it really added to the film, because literally, makeup can help enhance a horror film. And the makeup really did for this film. Whether the victims, it was just like, it's a gore fest. Seriously, it looked disgusting. Seriously, the way some of that gore makeup looked disgusting, you know, horrified. Plus, you had Art the Clown and the little kid that was with him. They both looked horrifying in their makeup. Plus, you had a heroine that had very good makeup as well, as she looked like a true heroine. Even without the gore effects, the makeup of the characters looked great. And it added another dimension to the characters. And that's what is supposed to happen in a horror film to some point. You need to add dimensions. You need to add the details. And makeup is one of those things where you can enhance a character without having the actor say a line and this film does a great job doing that as it really enhances everything your villains your good guys and your victims damien leone does a great job with makeup and and special effects that's why terrifier and terrifier 2 have won both of those awards in the fi five years of the horror show awards because Damien Leone is great at special effects and at makeup. He has a great team behind him, too. Which I really think is underutilized. I really hope they get more work in the future. Within the horror genre, because that's a great makeup team. That you want in, in your horror film. And that's why Terrifier 2 wins Best Makeup. Make that number 3 for Terrifier 2 at this year's... Horror Show Awards. Moving on. Best Cinematography. Last year I chose Army of the Dead. The 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Cinematography goes to Pearl. This is win number two for Pearl. Now the cinematography in this film is great. And it's leaps and bounds Better than any other horror film released in 2022. I like the fact that cinematographer Elliot Rocket does a very good job with the way this film is shot and the way this film looks. This film looks like it came out of like the 1918s. It really captures that period of time. And it had that Technicolor vibe that you would see in films like The Sound of Music, The Wizard of Oz, that really gives the film a unique look and separates the look of that film
compared to X, where X was more grittier. And I also like the fact that the look really is part of the film. It feels like another character in this film. As this film could have easily just looked bland, could have gone basic. But I like the fact that Rocket does a very good job making sure the scenes are shot well. Everything's lit very well. And the fact that he gets those close-ups, especially in the film's final scene where Pearl's smiling. It had that retro 50s type film vibe to it, which really gave this shocking film a very shocking conclusion as literally you very rarely see films end with the film's credits while you see the camera facing the main character. The way that Rocket photographs that scene is just perfect and it elevates what this film is and leaves a lasting impression on Pearl. That is number two for Pearl in this year's Horror Show Awards. Next up, Best Editing. Last year, I chose The Stylist. The 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Editing goes to Pearl. Make that number three for Pearl at this year's Horror Show Awards. Now, the editing in this film is just great because this film moves at a very good pace. Whether it's the decisions the editor makes, including letting a 10-minute monologue just stand as is to that nice dance sequence in which Pearl is auditioning for, to some of the kill scenes in the film. Everything's edited in a way that keeps everything moving. I like the fact that the editor does a very good job in this film, making sure that it has a rhythm, as this film never seems to have a dull moment. As this pace of this film is just good, I like how the editor also makes sure that, that there isn't, much dead space this as every scene felt like it was needed in this film there was never a scene in this film where i could say oh i wish that was edited out as i think the editor really did a great job in making sure that the scenes are cut down right he makes sure the action is flowing and like i said let that 10 minute monologue scene Stay as is. Because that 10 minute monologue scene is quite frankly the best part of this film. Make that number 3 for Pearl at this year's Horror Show Awards. Next category, Best Documentary. Now this is a category, if I see 3 or more documentaries, it becomes an active category in the Horror Show Awards. Last year I chose Clapboard Jungle. The 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Documentary goes to Pennywise, The Story of It. Now, this is a documentary that focuses on the original It, not the recent It. This documentary has pretty much almost all the original living cast members from the 1990 TV movie. I like how... The documentary really goes into the production of the miniseries. I like how directors John Campo Piano and Chris Griffiths do a very good job making sure that they get a lot of really good information on the making of this film. I was fascinated by some of the stories that were told in this documentary about the making of it, the miniseries. And I also like the fact that it really got a lot of its original cast members, including Tim Curry, Richard Thomas, Richard Masur, Dennis Christopher, Tim Reed, and more. As it really made this documentary very entertaining as 
about learning the history of this miniseries. Let's get to the new category in this year's Horror Show Awards. Best Foreign Film. I told you in the beginning that we will be doing a foreign film category since I tend to see more than three foreign films every year. So it would be fair to do a foreign film category here on the Horror Show Awards. As long as I see three or more foreign films, it will be an active category, just like Best Documentary. And the 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Foreign Horror Film goes to Dario Argento's Dark Glasses. Now, Dark Glasses literally was a return to form for Dario Argento. As for years, he's done some mediocre films. But I really think Dark Glasses is probably his best film since opera. And that's been a very long time. One of the reasons why I liked this film a lot is this film was suspenseful from the get-go. Argento really does a very good job with the way he directs this film. He directs this film in a way where this film, you're kept on edge throughout. It had like an intense feel to it, which is very good. His last two films, Gila, which was flat out awful, and Dracula 3D, which is pretty much a guilty pleasure film at best. Even though I loved Dracula 3D, that's more of a guilty pleasure film. But Doc Glasses is probably one of his most serious films in years. He also has a very good screenplay, too. I like the fact that he and Franco Fernini did a great job making sure it developed its main character throughout the film. I like how it develops the trauma that the main character is going through and the fact that they deliver a killer third act act which made this suspenseful and it also had a very good score too to go along with the action which is key for a Gilo film as Doc Glasses is literally Dario Argento's best film in years. A lot of people might be sleeping on this film but Doc Glasses is very good. Make that number two for Doc Glasses in this year's Horror Show Awards. Next up, Best Screenplay. Last year, I chose The Stylist. The 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Screenplay goes to Pearl. The screenplay for this film was just great, quite frankly. I really love how this screenplay really does a great job focusing on the psychology of Pearl, who was in X. As this is a prequel from X. Ty West and Mia Goth did a great job in making sure that they created a screenplay that focuses on a character's descent into madness. They do a great job with the way they write the dialogue for this film. This screenplay even has a great 10 minute monologue, which is probably one of the highlights of 2022. They also do a great job focusing on Pearl's relationship with her family. They do a great job focusing on how Pearl is just obsessed with becoming a star. Both Goth and Wes really did a great job in making sure that there's dialogue that keeps the flow of this film moving along. As you don't get many kill scenes in this film. So you need dialogue to move the story along and they do a great job doing that. It really kept me interested with what was going on in this film. Because quite frankly, if those dialogue scenes weren't written well, then we'd probably be talking about a different movie here. But I like how they focus more on the dramatic aspects, which made this entertaining. The screenplay is just perfect. It really helped made this film very good. Plus, it built its kill scenes. It didn't rush its kill scenes at all. It's like you had to wait a bit in order for the kill scenes to happen. But once they do, they are brutal. It's just a very good screenplay. 
I liked how there was a lot of thought put into this screenplay. It's very different from X. And I really cannot wait to see what Ty West has planned for Maxine. Make that number four for Pearl at this year's Horror Show Awards. Next category, Best Supporting Actress. Last year, I chose Maddie Hansen for Malignant, the 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Supporting Actress goes to Jenna Ortega for X. Now, Jenna Ortega really did a great job in this film. She could have easily gotten it for this film or Scream 5. Not Scream, people. Scream 5. But her performance is in X. Is... Much better, I think. Plus, it's more of a challenging role as well. As that is more of a serious film than Scream 5. She was great in both films. As she and Mia Goth were the two main actresses in horror this year. By far. No ifs, ands, or buts. The two main actors, quite frankly, in the horror genre this year. For their various roles. But Ortega here in X does a very good job with the way she plays her character. As her character is very different from all the other characters in this film. She's more shy. More reserved. And Ortega really played that role very well here. She made that character very interesting. As she struggles to fit in with these people. As they're out trying to shoot a porn movie. And things of course go wrong. But still she really puts a lot of effort in making sure her role is very good. She has great chemistry with various actors in this film. Including Mia Goth. And she really I think stands out in a way. That you could say, if you think of X, you probably think of two people in this film. Mia Goth and Jenna Ortega. Because both of their performances were very good in this film. And pretty much drive this film along through their performances alongside the action, the script, and everything else. You probably could have picked Brittany Snow or even Mia Goth in a supporting role as Pearl. As she plays two characters in this film. But Ortega I think was I think the best in terms of supporting performances in this film. And that's why Jenna Ortega wins Best Supporting Actress for X. Moving on to Best Supporting Actor. Last year I had Matthias Schreihufer for Ami of the Dead. The 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Supporting actor goes to Ethan Hawke, The Black Phone. Now, Ethan Hawke here played a great villain in this film. He's an actor usually known for being more of a good guy type roles. But this year he delivers, I think, one of the best performances of his career in The Black Phone. As he really does a great job really making this villain very menacing. I like the fact that in this film, he does a good job with the way that he presents his character. The way the character talks. The way he, he moves. He really is one of the highlights of this film. As this film has a very effective villain. He makes his character very scary from the way he delivers his lines. And from the way he looked in this film, quite frankly. I know most of this film he's under a mask, but still, the way he delivers his lines in this film are just frightening. There's even a couple of scenes when he's just like sitting there waiting for the kid to come upstairs. Him was just sitting on a chair looked very terrifying. Like it really added elements to this film. Because you can have a great screenplay, but if you don't have the right actor who can fit the role, then it dampers the film a little bit. But Ethan Hawke, every time he was on screen in this film, this film felt intense. 
It's mostly due to his performance in this film. As I really thought I could have even given him best actor for this film. If it wasn't for the fact that this character is a supporting character. It's one of those things where it's borderline supporting character, best actor deal. As either way, it could have easily went either category, in my opinion. But I decided to choose best supporting actor, which I will talk about more in a little bit. Because the acting in this film is just great. And it really drives home this film. As it takes what is a normal four-star film and amps it up to a five-star top ten type film. Because in horror, you're looking for great villains. And this year, we had really two really frightening villains. Art the Clown, of course, and The Grabber, as both of those villains were just downright frightening this year, seriously. And the reason why The Grabber is so frightening is the way that Ethan Hawke portrays this character. If this was any other actor, I don't know, it would be pulled off as flawless as what Ethan Hawke did with this role. And that's why Ethan Hawke wins Best Supporting Actor for The Black Phone. We've got four more to go here. Moving on to Best Actress. Last year I had Najara Townsend for The Stylist. This year the 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Actress goes to Mia Goth for Pearl. This was a tough one because I don't know if I should give it to her for Pearl or for X. It's both of those performances were just as equally as good. In fact, in X, she pulls off two roles flawlessly. One of the things that Mia got this very well in Pearl is to make her character very demented and very psychotic. She really captures the essence of that character. Whether the way she's speaking to the way that she approaches her scenes in this film are just great. It just kept my interest in this film throughout. She also has some really standout scenes in this film, including this dance scene that really makes this film good. She really performed the dance very well. It made it one of the highlights of this film. As you had that, then the rejection, then that great long monologue in which she really captures the attention of the screen. It's just great. She really makes Pearl an interesting character. Whether it was in this film or in X. She really played this character very well. And really makes this film very entertaining given the fact that it's completely different from X and it's more of a slow burn compared to X but it's her performance that just keeps this film going and makes you interested in her character and you need an actress of that caliber for a challenging role as this was a challenging role because of the things she had to do in this film. And she did it very well. And that's why Mia Goth wins Best Actress for Pearl. Make that number five for Pearl in this year's Horror Show Awards. Next award, Best Actor. Last year I had Gary Green for Fried Berry. The 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Actor goes to Mason Thames for The Black phone. You couldn't tell the fact that this kid only had a few credits to his name with the way he pulls off his performance in the black phone. Because usually kids' performances aren't as good, but Mason Thames' performance is great in this film. He's only been like in a few short films. That's about it before the black phone. And it's just amazing that he's able to pull this great performance in this film. Because literally, this is a film that thrives on its performances. You have Ethan Hawke, who you 
definitely expect to put in a good performance. But this kid looked like he had like 20 credits to his name with the type of performance they put in in the black phone. He does a great job with the way he approaches his character as he looked very mature as an actor. And it's tough for young actors to handle material like this and be so mature about it. But Thames really does a great job handling the material. He does a great job in making sure his performance as the kid who's trapped in the basement and struggling to get out of that basement is believable. I think really is one of the main reasons why the Black Phone is just that good, quite frankly. It's just acting was great. As she had some really great acting in this film. And it he looked like a pro. Considering his IMDB credits. He does a great job with the way he handles the scenes with Ethan Hawke. As those scenes really brought a lot of attention to them. It's something you would expect from maybe a actor who has more roles under his or her belt. But things really is a talent to keep an eye out for in the future. Because he just pulls off the scenes very well to making it almost believable and frightening that this kid is in peril. It's just amazing that this film really has some strong lead performances. It just does. Considering this is a film that two of your three main characters are young adults. It's just amazing, but especially for Thames, he really helps drive this film because if it wasn't for his performance and Hawk's performance and the dynamic the two had with each other on screen, we could be looking at a different movie. But he really does a great job keeping up with Ethan Hawk on those scenes with Ethan Hawk. And he really is one of the reasons why this film really succeeds to levels where it shouldn't. And that's why Mason Thames wins Best Actor for The Black Phone, and it is the second win for The Black Phone in this year's Horror Show Awards. We're near the end, everyone, as we are now to Best Director. Last year, I chose James Wan for Malignant, the 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Director goes to Ty West for Pearl. Yeah, this was pretty much the year of Ty West horror director-wise. As he's the only horror director that literally put out two films. Yeah, Gaspino put out two films as well this year, but one was a drama. So that doesn't count. But back to Ty West. Ty West's direction is just, was great. Whether it was in Pearl or X, it was just great. It really, I think, was a breakout year for him. As he's done some great work in the past. Like films like The House of the Devil and The Sacrament. One of the things I really liked about Ty's direction in Pearl was the fact that he really does a good job making sure he gets the performances down right. As this is more about Pearl. I like how he directs Mia Goth in this film. As he really helps make Pearl even more psychotic than she was in X. Whether it's the way that he directs her in the dialogue scenes... Or this big dance number in the audition in Pearl, which was one of the highlights of this film. That scene was like directed very well. And I also like the fact that he really makes sure he directs the dramatic scenes in that film. Because there are a lot of them. Because this is more of a slow burn type horror film. And he really makes sure that he makes the dramatic scenes as important as the kills in this film. As it's going into the state of Pearl's mind as she descends into madness. He really also does a really good job making sure everything moved at a good pace. Because there wasn't any 
downtime to this film as I was literally glued to everything that was going on. And a lot of it had to do with the direction because the direction this film really helped make Pearl a great film. Whether it's directing the actors or making sure the scenes had importance or had a special feel to them, it made this film great. And literally one of the best films of this decade. Make that number six for Pearl at this year's 2022 Horror Show Awards. The last category in the 2022 Horror Show Awards, Best Independent Horror Film. Last year, I chose The Stylist. This year, it's pretty obvious. As the 2022 Horror Show Award for Best Independent Horror Film goes to Pearl. Pearl, I think, out of all the films this year, had the complete package in what I look for in a film. Whether it's a horror film or a regular film. It had gr a very good screenplay. Great cinematography. It got the period piece down packed. It has a great lead performance. It has a couple of great moments that you can think of when you think of the film. It has great direction. Pearl is one of those films that really had it all. And it's just a very good film. Ty West really did a great job with this film. It also helped Mia Goth had a great performance in this film. It also helped that this film had a great cinematographer. As this film and its Technicolor look really gave this film a unique and special feel to it that you don't see in horror films. I could go on and on and on about how Pearl is great because this is one of those films where you have to see this film. Yes, I know it's a slow burn type of slasher, but it's worth it for the performances, for the direction, for the scenes. That's what made Pearl special this year and made it above X. While X was more grittier and more akin to the horror genre, Pearl had the more overall package in filmmaking, in serious tone, everything that really made that film great. And that is why Pearl wins Best Independent Horror Film. Make it number seven for Pearl at this year's Horror Show Awards. Now, I only have Best Film to give out. You'll have to wait next episode as I'll bring on a guest or two to talk about the top ten films of 2022. So you'll have to wait next episode for... My best horror film of 2022. Now, before we wrap this up, I'll just wrap up with what happened at this year's Horror Show Awards. Pearl led the way with seven wins. Then you had Terrifier 2 at three wins. Dario Argento's Dark Glasses at two wins. The Black Phone at two wins. And X with one win. And this wraps up the 5th Annual Horror Show Awards. Welcome to Dark Discussions, your place for the discussion of horror film, fiction, and all that's fantastic. A weekly podcast here, the discussion is about the most recent horror and genre films. Intelligent talk on a genre that deserves intelligence. A conversation between co-hosts discussing not only the film, but also the connotation that the directors and screenwriters are trying to articulate. When you want more than a review, listen to Dark Discussions.
And speaking of perception, there's just one more scene I want to talk about, which is after Caleb discovers that Kyoto's a robot, Kyoto kind of peels off her skin, showing him what's underneath. Now, wait a minute. I know where you're going with this, but tell me you weren't already thinking this 15 minutes earlier in the film. Exactly what he's thinking at that moment. Which is he's a robot, too. Oh, I considered the possibility. Right, and that's what I like, is the fact that the writers were smart enough to know that this is what the audience would be thinking. We've all seen Blade Runner. <laughs> right, exactly. So, www.darkdiscussions.com Wherever podcasts are found. Hi, I'm Anthony T. And I'm director Andrew Duran. And we are the... Two from hell. And we're putting Rated R back into podcasting. Every month we will be dropping an episode on the Doc Discussions Network. We'll be chatting about some of our favorite films, news, reviews, and maybe interviews. You can find Two from Hell on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcast providers. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram at Two From Hell Podcast. Trust me, you're seriously not going to want to miss the show. You'll find Anthony T's horror and wrestling show on these social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and the Slasher app at Anthony T's Horror and Wrestling and on Twitter at Anthony T's Power. You'll find new episodes on DocDiscussions.com, major podcast providers, and YouTube. What's Anthony T watching this episode? Yours truly is currently watching VS Films this month as I've got more f- films from the VS subscription package that I haven't seen yet. Case in point, The Incredible Melting Man. Yes, if that sounds like a dr- film for a drive-in title, it is that type of a film. The Incredible Melting Man. Going into this film, I had no idea what to expect for this film because basically I've never heard of this film, but I really wanted to watch it anyway because, well, A, I have the film, and B, it has effects from legendary special effects artist Rick Baker, so it was worth checking out. To see if I liked it or not. And for the most part, I thought it was a fun film. It didn't feel like a serious film. As this felt like one of those films that you typically will see in a drive-in. It's more of a throwback to the 50s and 60s monster type film. This had every B-movie trope you can think of. Creature, gory effects, hideous monster, nudity, no plot, hero chasing monster the entire time. But what I think makes this film enjoyable for me was the fact that it was a fun movie. It had that old 50s style B-movie feel to it. As this film literally looked like a drive-in film. William sat does a very good job with the way he directs the action in this film. I like how he keeps it moving through the acting and the way he approaches the monster scenes in this film. As the monster scenes are very good. Most of it had to do with Rick Baker's special effects. Now, if you don't know who Rick Baker is... He's done work on such classic car films as An American Werewolf in London, The Howling, and The Fun House. He also did the makeup design for Squirm and Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope. His effects are just great in this film. The creature effects is what I think sells this movie 
to perfection as it really made this film enjoyable. The fact you get to see makeup artists at work and the way he approaches those effects. It made the monster in this film very creepy and very hideous, which is needed for a film of this magnitude. Now, the screenplay from William Satch has that monster movie feel from the 1950s with the way he handles the action to some of the situations that the heroes in in the film. It just has that feel to it, which really made it different from various other horror films that are released during that time period. As this was going for more of a drive-in type feel to it, in my opinion, as it does have all the elements, like I stated in the beginning. But Satch does a good job with the way the action is handled. As this is what really, I think, makes this film entertaining. Because without the action in this film, this probably would have been somewhat of an okay film. But thankfully, this film had good action. One of the things I wished for in this film was maybe the monster to be mysterious a little more. Maybe to not find out until the end of the film what was going on with this monster. I would have been like to have been kept in suspense to know what the hell was going on or who this person is. It would have worked a little better, but everything else is good. That's probably me nitpicking, if anything. The fact that maybe it would have worked a lot better if they held off on the reveal of the person and why this is happening to this person to the end of the film. I just didn't feel comfortable with that, like, being sprinkled in midway through. Plus, the introduction was rushed. If you're going to introduce someone and not have a backstory, I'd rather have it wait to the end of the film. But still, The Incredible Melting Man is a very good B-movie. It has everything that you need for it to succeed. And this is one of those films that probably fits perfect when you're seeing a film at the drive-in. Don't forget, you can catch the latest episode of Two From Hell Movie Podcast as yours truly and Andrew are joined with Joshua Darlin from Horror Depot as we talk about modern slashes versus retro slashes. Check out that episode as this month's episode of Two From Hell movie podcast is completely off the wall. So you can check that out, whether on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or the Doc Discussions Network. On the next episode of Anthony T's Horror and Wrestling Show, I will be doing the Best of 2022 episode. That means I will be joined by guests... As we will count down the top 10 films of 2022. As this year, I brought on Elizabeth Gray and Nathan Hamilton from Archivist Bet on Sexy Witches, which can be found on Blog Talk Radio. The three of us will talk about our top 10 favorite genre films of 2022. With that, I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Don't forget to like Film Arcade Media on YouTube. And don't forget to listen to the podcast on DocDiscussions.com. With that, I want to thank you for listening to the podcast. Have a good day. Support indie wrestling and support indie horror.
This has been a Film Arcade Media production.